Okay, so welcome to this next video on uh, P53 and the response to DNA damage. So okay, we've so far seen how if DNA damage occurs to a cell, i.e. Uh, maybe a mutation happens, maybe some sort of chemical insult to the DNA happens, or in our case we've looked at uh, radiation causing a double strand break of the DNA, what it's going to lead to is the activation of P53. P53 is then going to form a tetramer, like so, and it's going to go into the nucleus. So we'll go over the page to see what's going to happen now. So, um, let's say this is the nucleus of the cell, here, okay, and let's say this is the DNA here, okay, and one of the most important targets for P53 um, is a protein known as P21, but there are other targets. So P53 has a lot of targets in the cell. Okay, so um, let's say um, this is a gene here that I'm drawing now, and this box up here is a promoter box. So upstream of all genes in eukaryotic cells, you have um, promoter regions, basically, which control the expression of that gene, i.e. how much of the gene product of that gene you actually make. And the way in which they control the expression of the gene is that in order to actually express the gene, you need to get the RNA polymerase enzyme binding to the DNA and then uh, making its way along the DNA and... Um, and transcribing that DNA, basically, making an mRNA strand, which is complementary to the coding strand of the DNA, okay? And uh, in order to get the RNA polymerase to actually do that, the RNA polymerase firstly has to bind to the DNA, and basically the region of the DNA which uh, the RNA polymerase binds to is this promoter region here. So, um, the affinity of the promoter region for RNA polymerase is going to control how much mRNA you make for this gene, and therefore how much of the gene product of this gene you actually make. Okay, so if you can bind proteins to this promoter region, which will increase the affinity of the RNA polymerase for binding to this promoter region, then you will increase the amount of mRNA you make uh, for the, for, from the gene, and therefore increase the amount of gene product you make from the gene. So, basically, what's going to happen is our P53 tetramer is going to come and bind to the promoter regions of certain genes and increase the affinity of RNA polymerase for binding to that promoter region and therefore increase the uh, amount of mRNA you produce and therefore increase the amount of the protein that you produce. So, what sort of proteins is it going to produce? Well, firstly, it's going to produce loads of proteins that are involved in DNA repair. Now, this makes sense. We have got DNA damage, okay? So we need to repair that damage. So it's going to produce all the machinery associated with DNA repair. And DNA repair is a massive topic which we will cover in different videos uh, because there are many different mechanisms of DNA repair because there are many different ways that the DNA can be damaged, basically. And they're all requiring different mechanisms to fix. Okay, but roughly, P53 is responsible for increasing the transcription of those, um, those proteins involved in um, DNA repair. Okay, then it also produces the protein P21, the role of which is to prevent the uh, progression through the cell cycle. So this is going to arrest the cell cycle. So basically, if you've got a cell that has uh, suffered a mutation uh, in its DNA, you do not want that cell dividing. So uh, P53 basically shuts down all division processes. No matter where you are, it's going to shut down division processes. And the way it does this is through this protein P21, which we've seen before because it's um, also involved in the transforming growth factor beta pathway. Okay, but I will go over how that protein works once again uh, in a moment. And then, if the P53 signal is maintained for too long, what starts to happen is the cell starts to feel that, you know, uh, this probably isn't going to get better. This is some problem that 
isn't going to be curable. It's going to, uh, you've got so much damage uh, that P53 has been elevated for this long period of time, we might as well just end it. We're not going to be able to fix it. So if it gets, if you have prolonged high signals of P53, it starts producing pro-apoptotic proteins. So it starts producing proteins that are involved in uh, driving the cell to actually kill itself, to commit suicide and uh, destroy all of its DNA, destroy all of its proteins and um, destroy itself, basically. Okay, again, we're not going to um, pro-apoptotic proteins. We're not going to discuss pro-apoptotic proteins in this video. We'll do that in a separate video where we discuss um, the intrinsic pathways of apoptosis. Okay, what we're going to discuss in this video, because we've studied the cell cycle and we know something about it, is we're going to discuss P21, um, because this is going to arrest the cell cycle. So we want to know, how does it arrest the cell cycle? And basically, it does it in three ways. P21 inhibits uh, the interactions between uh, cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases, and it, inhibit, and it binds to and inhibits free cyclin-dependent kinases. Okay, so let's show P21 here, okay? And it basically is going to bind to uh, cyclin-dependent kinase 1, cyclin-dependent kinase 2s, and cyclin-dependent kinase 3. So let's draw it three times, inhibiting all of the three of them, basically. Okay, right. And what I need to do before I can explain to you um, what the role of this is, is I need to discuss the cell cycle in some, de uh, in some detail, because I would like this video to be able to stand alone, and I'm not assuming you have watched my previous videos in which we've discussed the cell cycle. So I will give you a bit of background into the cell cycle so that we can have some hope of understanding what this means. Okay, right. So in pink here, I am drawing the P21 protein, okay? Um, so, this protein here is P21. So, I've shown it interacting with three different proteins, which, yes, okay, I've drawn all identical at the moment, but I will distinguish between the two, well, between three, sorry, uh, in a moment, with colour. Right, so let's colour this one in green, or outline this one in green, and um, this one will make... Um, CDK4. And you might wonder why I'm not doing it in order. Well, it's because uh, CDK4 comes earlier in the cell cycle, so we'll do them in the order of the cell cycle rather than in order of numbers. Okay, and this pink one then is CDK2, cyclin-dependent kinase 2, and this final one here, which we'll have in orange here, is CDK1, so it's in exactly the opposite order to which they would have been if I'd done it in numerical order. Okay, so this is CDK1, and basically it's going to inhibit all of these enzymes. It's going to inhibit their interactions with cyclins. Okay, so uh, we'll call it there for this video, and then in the next video what we'll do is we'll discuss uh, the... Um, we'll discuss the... Um, the cell cycle in a bit more detail and try and understand what inhibiting these cyclin-dependent kinases does.